Good evening, YouTube. This is Rancic from RCC Entertainment bringing you another video, guys. In this video, I will be bringing you my top 10 comics of the decade, guys. And the first comic right here, guys, it is Daredevil Dark Nights by Lee Weeks. Now, Daredevil Dark Nights was a fantastic story. I loved it. It was a little mini, but the story is, is really beautiful. It's about um, Daredevil getting sucked into a snowstorm in, in, in New York City and and he's basically trying to save a, a young kid's life by doing a heart transplant and it was fantastic it was just beautifully written um, it's great the art's great um, and it's very it's very heartening you know it reminds me a lot of John Q the movie where the little kid you know has the heart transplant and you know they try you know with his father and his father's trying to do everything in his power to get that heart back to him so uh, to find a heart for him so it, it's it's so it's so powerful and so moving and i think this is the direction of this of this dark nights it reminds me something like that daredevil's trying to do everything in his power to get this young man his heart trying to go over kingpin trying to stop the shocker so it's 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 just fantastic writing and, and i love that um lee weeks is amazing um thank you so much for this one but let's keep on going, guys. Let's keep on going. Let's put this right to the side right there. And this is my number nine right over here. Event Leviathan by Bendis. Um, Event Leviathan, um, I loved it because it was a detective style story. And the detective style story had all the brain trustees of the DC universe. You know, it was amazing. You had Batman. It had Lois Lane. It had a question, which I love so badly. I'm happy Question is back. It was I was so shocked to see him back um, instead of that that whole mess in the new 52 with the uh, with the question, which was terrible. But uh, now he's back to normal um, and I'm happy about that. This story was all over the place, it, um, it, but it was great. Um, at some parts, I'm like, huh, I'm scratching my head. But there are other times where I'm like, oh, OK, I think that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Um, I love that they're all working together to stop one common enemy, an enemy that they, you know, that's outsmarting them from any, from every angle. Um, and it's just fantastic. And, and if anybody wants to read it, guys, it's a mini series, definitely check it out. It's a mystery thriller. It's from Bendis. Check out that story. Event Leviathan is great. Let's keep on moving on, guys. Number eight is Lois and Clark by Dan Jurgens. Lois and Clark, guys, was a great story, guys. It introduced uh, Jonathan Kent um, and basically bringing back the pre-52 Superman. Um, it's just fantastic. It was great writing, great art. Um, and just by doing the whole story about the pre-52 Superman, coming back, taking down the new 50... Well, basically absorbing the new 52 Superman. And then we got Mr. Spitalik. Disguising himself as one of the, of the Kents to have a third Superman confusing everybody because it confused me. Like I was like, "What is going on here?" Like it was like it was like it was just amazing, um, and I just loved it. I loved it. You know, it was like that undercover family. You know, they were like trying to hide because he didn't want to like show like the real Superman, like the new Fifty Two Superman, who you know that oh, it's another Superman. But where, where are you from? You know what I mean? Like. It was just fantastic writing. It's uh, It was good. Dan Jurgens is the man. Um, and it's a shame that they didn't go further to introduce what happened after. Um, but, you know, it was great. Um, this was just an easy way to bring back new pre-52 Superman uh, and keep it going. So uh, the next one will be my number, a seventh. The button storyline. Uh, DC Rebirth, Batman number 21. This was the introduction of the Button storyline, guys. This is what brought the Watchmen, was bringing the Watchmen over to DC Universe with the whole mystery between uh, um, Kid Flash, Wally West. The original Wally was coming back. He's getting stuck in the Speed Force. It was fantastic. I was happy that Wally was coming back. I missed him so much. Um, and having um, that whole storyline of the Earth, you know, of... Um, that whole crisis event, you know, with freaking for Kid Flash going all over the place, trying to find a way to get uh, get out, trying to find a way to go to Barry and talk to him, and have that whole story is just it's just amazing. 
Batman in the middle of it trying to figure out what is this button all about? What's this whole mystery behind the button? And then we find out later that 10 years has been stolen for the DC universe. So it's it's just amazing. And we and they don't even know who it is. They don't know who it is until later on. And Doomsday Clock. So it is it's fantastic. Um I loved it. It was it's passionate, it's, it's strong, and I can't wait to um, you know, I already finished Doomsday Clock, but if you guys want me to review Doomsday Clock, let me know. I'll definitely review it as a whole. And over here, we got number six, the death of Wolverine. This story was great. It was the death of Wolverine. Um it's the first time in present time that Wolverine has died. I mean, he has died before, but in more of like the older days. But it was great. It was a sad story. Um, seeing De um, Logan cannot recuperate, cannot heal from his injuries. His healing factor was slowly diminishing. It's just, it was a breath of fresh air. Charles Soule is an amazing writer. Uh, I love his work in Daredevil as well. Um, so it's, it's, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. But I was shocked though, because I was like, this is how he dies. I was like, really? Like no grand scheme, no nothing. So I was really shocked about that, but it's, it's, it was a great story. It was good. And that's why I really, I, I ranked it up there. Number five guys, one of my favorites, Nova, number one by Jeff Loeb. I, I enjoy, uh, Sam Alexander. Uh, I think he was a fantastic character, teenage boy, trying to find his father in space and trying to figure out where is he? Is he alive? Is he dead? Um, it's just it's just a great story. He's just trying to fit in, trying to be a superhero, try to get this helmet. Um, helmet landed to him so he doesn't know how to use it. But when he finds how to use it, he's like, oh, my God, now I'm a superhero. You know, it's awesome. Yay. You know, so I loved it. Nova was fantastic. It reminded me of reading some old school Spider-Man. Um, that type of tense, you know, when you're a preteen, you know, learning your powers and abilities and responsibility. So it's it, to me, it's like one of those one of those amazing stories, those average style stories that it takes. You know, you have school life, you have all this stuff. So it to me, I liked it, um, and that's why I have it up there. The next one it is a number four, Mister Miracle. Uh, Mister Miracle by the man Tom King. Uh, was it a great, amazing art, uh, amazing story, um, and is one of the top stories that I, I believe Tom King has done. I mean, Tom King is an amazing writer. He's done amazing work all over the place. But I really love his Mr. Miracle. It's great, great writing, um, great tone, uh, great imagery. Just, a, just that's all I can really much say about it. It's just too much great stuff to, to even mention. Um, and number uh three actually number three the amazing spider-man 700 guys uh this was the introduction of the superior spider-man by dan slot uh, i know a lot of people got uh heat on dan slot because of this because everyone wanted to keep peter alive you know and all that stuff i enjoyed it i enjoyed superior spider -Man. i enjoyed Otto octavius becoming spider-man and it just brought so much it brought it brought a, a fresh you know, breath for fresh air. You know, it, it was, it's natural. It was, in, it was in, intelligent. It was something like really cool. And I loved it. I mean, yes, was I mad that Peter died? Of course I was. Who wasn't mad, um, mad that Peter died? I'm, a lot of people was mad that Peter died. But I feel like Superior Spider-Man was a great character. And it is a great character. And if you want to read the story, guys, check it out. Superior Spider-Man issues one through 33. Um, and that was my number two. Oh, and actually my number three. Let me correct that. My number three. My number two, Ghost Spider. Spider-Gwen, number one. Uh, great story. Again, Jason Latour. Uh, and it's basically a fantastic story. It brought us an original character um, coming back from the edge of spider-verse number two i think is her debut her official debut this is her official debut as a solo run so it was great um i loved it it was like she's in a punk rock band boom 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 and she's fantastic she was funny i liked her bad guys especially um matt murdoch because <laughs> i'm a big daredevil fan um and having matt murdoch to be the villain um was amazing and it's just like it's crazy, like, and, and everything's a little bit reversed. It's wanky. 
Uh, I just hope that her relationship with Miles Morales grows. And I hope that, you know, they actually go out because I think they make a good couple. And my number one, guys, is Superior Spider-Man, number one. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Um, but I love this story. I love this story. I love all the, the issues. Yes, it was different. Yes, it's not the same Spider-Man. It was a more ruthless Spider-Man. It was a more intelligent Spider-Man. And people just didn't like that. They liked the wanky kid, the old, the old school Pete, the one that, you know, everyday hero. And I understand that. I love that type of hero too. But I honestly believe that Superior Spider-Man was really well written. And Dan Slott, you know, deserves a lot of great praise for this. And I love you, Dan. Um, and he's a great guy. I met him a couple of times. And he's a big Doctor Who fan. So it's uh, pretty good that it was a really good story. It's it's just fantastic. The art was great. The story was great. Um, the side characters are great. I love Anna Maria. Uh, she, was, <laughs> she was an amazing, amazing person. And she loved Peter, even though she, it was really Otto. And I felt bad for her because I really wanted her and Otto to be together. I feel like she should have, I mean, yeah, she should have given him a chance. But she saw that it wasn't really Peter. You know what I mean? It was Otto. And after a while, yeah, she felt betrayed. I understand that. And you can't really trust Dr. Octopus. But I still think it would have been a great, great um, relationship. Because, <laughs> you know, I think Otto deserves a little happiness. Even the bad guy deserves a little happiness here and there. And that's the reason why I love this story. Because it, it brought us the inside of the brain of a bad guy trying to do good and try to figure out a way to save people, even if it's the extreme measures. And that's why this story to me is number one um, of the decade for me, because I loved it. And I love Superior Spider-Man. He is my number one Spider-Man. Um, and even though I love Peter, uh, and I love the, and I love other Spider-Mans, like I love Ben Riley, but this guy right here is, I don't know, he's up there. Like, uh, <laughs> and then when he became Tolliver, and, and, and volume two of Superior Spider-Man. Um, I love that even more. So I feel like he should have just stood like that, but I don't want to spoil no, no other spoilers unless you guys want to read it. Well, unless, you know, I mean, the story has been out for a while, so I'm, I'm sure you guys read it, but if you guys haven't read it, please check it out. But yet again, guys, that is my number one. Thank you so much for checking out this video, guys. Please leave a like, share, or subscribe, guys. It would be awesome if you guys do. But as always, guys, it was a pleasure. And check out my next video, guys. I will be doing some more box openings of some Pokemon cards. I did order the Clash of Rebellion, uh, Rebel Clash, actually. Um, and it should be coming pretty soon. And when I get them, I will upload them. So thank you so much, guys. And as always, take care of yourselves.